Hi, welcome to another episode. So this week we're going to look at animating with 3JS. Not anything, like not trying to do any snazzy animating, but just trying to understand how does an animation work. I got a cool question in from Juan. He was asking about how could you animate based on the scroll position on the page? So there's a little bit of complication in that, but what I'm going to try and show you here is how to understand how 3 animates. And then you can go on and figure out how to do the animating on scroll yourself. There's a few accessibility issues there. And I want to just make sure that we can understand the basics first before we go on and do anything bigger. So I'm just going to show you how to take this animation and be able to control it with a range slider. But in your own HTML, it's not that GUI or anything. It's your own simple HTML range slider. And then the important bit to be able to really understand how does free animate, what's happening when it animates. So I've got a super simple scene set up here. We're importing three, setting up some base variables, and we've got an init, a render, and an animate function. So init sets up a scene, sets up a renderer, sets up a camera, N nothing at all fancy happening there. And then it sets up our mesh. Again, super simple. It's, it's the least amount of code I could think of to be able to do this animation so that we can be really clear on what's happening. Then we have a, I'm going to start with the render function, which takes the renderer and asks it to render. And then an animate function, which in an interval, asks the renderer to render and is controlling our mesh position. So set a renderer and rendering and renderer a lot. But what are we actually talking about there? So let's look at the life cycle of three. So if we get rid of the animate function. So when three emits, when it sets up the scene and the renderer and all of these things, what has it done? What have we achieved? What's really happening? So if we investigate, we have a canvas element. But is that it? What else is going on? So even say the mesh here, we could log the mesh. And we can see we have all this data. And at the start, I always thought three and animating with it was kind of magic. Like three was this little black box and it was you couldn't understand it. But really, three, in my mind, and I'm sure I'm not completely right here, but this hasn't set me on the wrong path yet. Three is really setting up an awful lot of just JavaScript objects. And then when you ask it to render, it interprets those and updates the canvas with its interpretation. So we can see here that the mesh is just an object. Like we can see the geometry here, the box geometry that we've got set up here is this. We're setting up the material that's here. It's a, it becomes an object, so it has a position. So say position here, if we log mesh.position and try again. So zero, zero, zero. That's just an object. Like it's a vector three, so it attaches some um, functions that we can use, which is really handy. When we're thinking about animation, remember it's just an object. So these are just numbers, which is why we're able to say mesh position and we can set it, say we set the X position equal to 0.5. Then it updates here. So we're updating this data we're not seeing anything on the screen. Everything's still black. Why is that? And that's because we're not rendering. So if we render this, the cube has moved over there. If we don't, the cube stays in the middle. So, sorry, if we don't change the position. So you can see the render is just take all of these objects and paint them one time. So that's all that's happening. 
So if we go back and take a look at what's happening in the animate function, we're setting up the next animation. But all that's really happening is we're making one of those changes to the mesh position. And then we're asking it to paint one time. So that's all the animation is. Painting the current state of those objects that 3 has in memory. Which is how, when if instead of just render, we do animate, we're getting this animation. So I think another way to try and make that clear is let's not animate like this. And let's actually get in at that mesh. So at the moment, I've got it set up as a, a let variable within the module. We're going to make a little change so that we can play with it in the console. We're actually going to attach it to the window. which means, so now it's no longer animating down here, but that animation is still going. It's still requesting animation frames, it's still checking all those objects, and it's rendering whatever those settings are. So now that we've attached the mesh to the window, we can check out mesh here, and here's all our info. And we can, again, check out mesh.position. So now we've kind of got a little bit of a view of it in the console, that's where this started to click for me. It felt like, ah, this is outside of three. I can kind of control this now. So now in the console, we could say mesh position dot X is 0.5 or minus 0.5. So does that, hopefully that explains more of how the animation works, that it's not some magic thing happening in three. It's literally just on every frame change the object, change the X position, maybe change the Y position. Oh, that went a little funny. That's really strange. That wasn't intended. <laughs> Let's keep going. Uh, so that's how animations really work. You're just changing those numbers in whatever scenario you might be changing. You might be using an animation framework to change those objects within three. So maybe to try and make this clearer, because sometimes this can all feel a little abstract. So let's make a HTML element and we're going to control the position with that HTML element. So we're going to make an input. That's a range. And I've put in a little bit of CSS to pop this down the bottom. So it's just this little range slider here that we're going to mess with. So first of all, let's set up our event listener. So I just got GitHub Copilot and it's ridiculous, but let's not go this far yet. So what we've done is we're getting our element. Let me collapse these a little bit so we can make this more clear. So we have a range slider here called pause. We're getting position. We're adding an event listener whenever there's an input. And that's just console log the value. So at the moment, it's between 0 and 100. Not quite what we're after. Let's set the min to minus 0.5 and the max to 5 and let the step be something small like say 0 0.01. So now we're getting a value between minus 0.5 and plus 0.5. So that'll help us slide this back and forward. Actually, let's just make it 1 because that was working quite nicely with the sign function earlier. It might be easier to think about. So minus one, plus one. And we're going to update the mesh's X position to this value. So that's what Copilot was already trying to get us. So remember how this is working. We have exposed the mesh to the window, which isn't a great way of doing it. This is just to try and show you how to, how to think about this. If you look at my other 
examples. I'm going to share this in the repo as well. If you look at the previous example, you see that I've got a, a sketch variable that I expose, which is a bit more robust, but this is just so we can get easily into it. So we've got a window.mesh, which exposes the mesh to the window, which means out here, outside of three, when we're working with the input, we're able to access that mesh. So we're just setting its position equal to the target position. So now we can control that animation with the range. So now you can imagine that's how we could do so for one, when we're scrolling down, you might be able to take the scroll position and have it as a percentage of the height of the page, and that's the percentage of your animation. Uh, I would advise using like an animation library like GSAP or Anime to help out with that, just to make sure that things are neat and easier that can get really complicated really quick. But hopefully that explains exactly how animations work in three and how you can take hold of them and control them and do your own things. As always, thanks a million for all the likes and the questions coming in. It's been really great because I'm, I guess some of my work is kind of similar things being repeated. So your questions really help me find out what you guys want to know and how I can help out. So keep them all coming and thanks as always. Thanks a million.